What's cracking, y'all? Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. You know who it is. It's your boy, Ray G. You can find me on X at Ray GQ. Shout out to all the bros out there tapping and watching this show from wherever you are in the world. And shout out to y'all. If you're here for the first time, appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time. If you stick around to the end of the video and you find the information actionable and or entertaining, hit that subscribe button. Comment below. Let me know what you think about these players, which players you want me to highlight. Tell me, let me know if you guys have been digging around into some of this stuff that we're talking about from a Trinity perspective. I've gotten a lot of questions over the past week about Trinity and Ray, why do you use this over that? Or how do you use this information? And what if it was all weighted equally? Let me tell you right now, for me and how my brain works and how I operate, the reason why we got here and how I started talking about these particular metrics is over the summer, uh, my Discord group, you can go right there, destinationdebbie.com, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash all gas. We were talking about trying to identify some potential breakout, breakout candidates, and what am I looking for when I'm looking for those wide receivers for seasonal leagues or and or in Dynasty? And as I'm looking through some different metrics and numbers, the three stats that continue to stick out to me, which seem very intuitive and very, okay, that's common football sense, were target share, air yard share, and yards after the catch per reception. Now, you can look at some other things inside the end zone, red zone type things, but when you just look at those three things and think about it from its simplest form, getting targets, right? If you're a good receiver, team is going to target you. You're going to have more opportunity to score fantasy points. If you're creating or getting high-value targets down the field, your yards per route run are higher than the next man. The air yard share, higher than the next man, you're getting the valuable targets. So targets plus valuable routes should yield some fantasy success. But then what takes it to the next level? And I'm looking at other things, and it's like, oh, yak. The ones that can yak, probably really good. So looking at those three things, and you can use a bunch of different stuff. You can use targets per route run, yards per route. There's other ancillary things that you can look at. But as somebody who's not, I'm not an Excel expert. I don't know all this formulas and functions. So I'm trying to disseminate information that you, the people, the public can be like, oh, I understand that. That makes football sense to me. I can look those numbers up myself. So thanks to Fantasy Points, I'm able to do that very quickly utilizing their Fantasy Points data suite. And it just helps illustrate and highlight some things that are intuitive, that we watch, that we see, that we probably all recognize. But to put some actual data behind it and look at it amongst the other people in the league or the other players on their own team makes it very, very simple to approach this. So remember, with the Trinity, you get a receiver with all three of the things, target share, air yard share slash yards per route run, and then yards after the catch per reception. You get a receiver with all three of those things, you've got an elite difference-making superstar, a war difference maker. And when I say war, I mean wins above replacement. So if you go to dd.com, you can check out one of the tools on the website. It's our war tool. You can actually go in here, punch in your specific league, right? You can. I'm just using underdog best ball mania for data. So my team isn't popping up. If you actually put your team in, the players will pop up for you. But when you're looking at this, really shows you what positions for every single league that you're in, whether it's on Sleeper, MFL, and we've got it customized to mirror ESPN, CBS, and Yahoo leagues, which positions actually matter. And you see this right here, running back. If you have Christian McCaffrey, he is the most valuable player in your league on a replacement level value standpoint. And in underdog right now, you're talking about BBM. If you played an underdog, I hope you loaded up on receivers. Look at this. Look at that line. This line being above everything else shows you how valuable wide receivers are. Puka Nakua, 1.13 war on the season. The only receivers better than Puka Nakua, Keenan Allen and Justin Jefferson. Look at this flat line tier. Tight ends in the quarterbacks like if you draft a quarterback early in uh bbm4 not looking too hot right now so this is just one of the ways that i utilize and take some of the information that we see here check it and cross-reference it with my particular league and figure out if i need to make moves based on some of the things that we're seeing on film on tape and through the data so let's dive right into it right now let me move myself over here make it a little bit smaller because we really don't need to see me and start out with the same thing that we do every single episode, identifying the players 
uh, who lead the league in target share percentage. I have this thing filtered out by at least, what do I have, uh, 50 routes minimum and at least 20 targets. So if you don't have 20 targets, you don't pop up in the subset. And if you haven't ran at least 50 routes, you do not pop up either. So just looking at the top 10, in target share so far through four weeks of the season. Got Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, Justin Jefferson, Keenan Allen, Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs, Zay Flowers, New Hopkins, Jamar Chase. Then we got Michael Pittman, Brandon IU, Hollywood Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, Romeo Dobbs, rounding out that top 17, Debo Samuel, and Kelsey there as well. So when you're talking about target share in regards to the Trinity, what I really want to see is anywhere between 20 and 35%, 20% to about 25%. That's average 25 to about 30% average. I've got that categorized as elite light. And then once you get over 30 plus percent, you get a, that 40% target share. That is elite rarefied air. Uh, as far as target share percentage, you get players doing that. It's on a whole nother level, right? Remember with the Trinity three of three, not letting you walk off my team. You are an elite difference maker, a war difference making player. Two of three, if those two cups are overflowing, you're probably still a very high valued receiver. If you only got one of the three Trinity elements, eh, you're not as valuable as the others. And we're going to talk through some that should be valued a little higher and some that we might need to think about making a pivot on, especially in Dynasty. So there goes your top 10 in target share. So let's go to the next thing. Let's just take a look at yards per route run. Filter that out. And here goes your leaders in that category. Brandon Ayuk, Tyree Kill, Nico Collins, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams, and Stephon Diggs. Amon Ross St. Brown. Keep that name on your radar sitting right here at number 11 overall. And this should correlate fairly good with air yard share. There's Brandon Ayuk, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, Tyree Kill, Mike Evans, Chris Olave, Justin Jefferson, D.J. Moore popping up. Let's star him. Amari Cooper and T. Higgins sitting at 10 in air yard share. Where's my boy Amon Ra? Down there at 22. Just, again, remember the name. And then let's go Yak. Yards after the catch per reception. Nico Collins heard his name pop up inside the top 10 twice. Debo Samuel popping up. George Pickens, let's star him. Evan Ingram, Mike Williams is hurt. JSN, star JSN. Let's put a star by him. Tank Dell, CD Lamb, Chris Olave, Mike Evans. So there you go. Your top 10 from the three main categories. I've got first read target percentage pulled up as well. Really like that. Another ancillary piece. And just some other things. Targets per route run and uh, fantasy points, uh, expected fantasy points per route run, and then fantasy points per game. So let's just do that. Tyreek Hill is expected fantasy points per route run, 0.72, ridiculous. Devontae Adams, 0.7. And then the leaders in fantasy points per game at wide receiver, Jefferson, Keenan Allen, Tyreek Hill, Puka Nakua, Stephon Diggs are your top five. There's Amon right there at number 11. So let's talk a little bit about Amon Ross St. Brown. Let's go look up the Detroit Lions, and these are the only Lions that have satisfied these filters over here of a minimum of 50 routes. We're going to change that, and the custom targets, we're going to change that as well. I just want to show everybody on the teams now. Now that we filtered everything out, let's go ahead and reduce it back down so we can increase our sample size for the teams that we're going to look at. And I'm going to talk to you guys about why I believe I'm in Ross St. Brown is a dynasty sell. Yes, I said a dynasty sell for Armin Ross St. Brown. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. They think I'm crazy. Oh, my God, Ray. How on earth could you want to sell Armin Ross St. Brown? And I'm here to tell you it has absolutely nothing to do with his talent, absolutely nothing to do with his skill set. It is the fact that right now, this is a player who is valued as the dynasty wide receiver three. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Armin Ross St. Brown. So when I look at that, I'm saying, okay. Chase and Jefferson, although Jamar Chase is having a down season due to Joe Burrow, he's an elite difference-making wide receiver. Justin Jefferson, the best receiver in the game. He's the number one war type receiver. So that makes sense. Armin Ross St. Brown, it doesn't make sense to me. The cost and the value in which he's at right now at Dynasty Wide Receiver 3, I'm looking at those Trinity components. And when you look at the target share amongst his own team, Sam Laporta right behind him, right around 21%. Amon Ross St. Brown, 26% target share for his team. Just so you remember, that is an elite light category. That is really good. Elite is anything above 30%. Once you get to uh, you know 25 to 29.9%, that is elite light. So great target share percentage. But Sam Laporta, the tight end, 
Hell, he's damn near there, and he's a rookie tight end with significantly less routes than Amon Ross St. Brown. Josh Reynolds right at about 14% target share, and they're getting back Jamison Williams. So what do I expect to happen? Is Amon Ross St. Brown going to lose all of his opportunity? Absolutely not. But what I do expect is some drawback on the, on the bone, just like those ribs. When you smoke them right, that bone, that meat pulls back on the ribs, and I expect a slight pullback from a little bit of everybody, Laporta, Josh Reynolds, Amon Ross St. Brown, even if it's not a significant amount. What if it's only 1.5%? Take Amon Ross down to about 25 24%. It puts him in a completely different tier. And the air yard share, while good at 32%, Reynolds 23%, and Jamison Williams is better than Josh Reynolds. So again, probably going to pull back on that air yard share for Amon Ross St. Brown. And you got Laporta sitting right there at 19% air yard share. Yards per route run, Amon Ra leading the team, but right behind him, Sam Laporta, Khalif Raymond, Josh Reynolds, Yak, yards after the catch per reception, Josh Reynolds, Sam Laporta, and Amon Ra St. Brown already fourth in that category. Now, he is getting the bulk of the first three targets from Jared Goff, but back to the Trinity. If you don't have all three, that's okay. You can still be elite, but the other buckets better be overflowing with volume. You better be a 30-plus percent target share guy on your own team. Your air yard share, that thing needs to be 35% to about 40%. That is that elite light territory for that for that respective bucket. Your yak per step after uh, yak after the catch needs to be higher than what it is. Right now he's sitting at where's Amon Ra? 3.73. That's below average. What I want to see in that category is, you know, average is 4 to about 5. 5 to about 5.99 that is elite light yak per reception he's in that average to below average range and here's the thing y'all Amon Ra was never even at USC go look at his numbers on PFF that was never his calling card yak and downfield targets he's a high volume target machine so if you're going to tell me the story that he's going to go out there and do DeAndre Hopkins type things like he did in 2015 I'm all in but absent that if I can cash out and go from an Amon Ross St. Brown to let's just say, for instance, you can trade him in Dynasty and get a player like Brandon Ayuk and a first round pick. Can you get Ayuk in a first? Can you get Ayuk in two seconds? That's a move that I'm doing all day, every day. He's on the thumbnail. Take a look at this. Same type of target share as Amon Ross St. Brown with Debo Samuel, with George Kittle, with Christian McCaffrey. There is no pulling back. This is what they want to do. Get the ball downfield to Brandon Ayuk. So you're looking at his target share percentage, and right now that is an elite light territory, right? Elite light creeping up to that elite territory at 27%. Air yard share. This is what I'm talking about. Aminra, 32% without JMO. With everybody on the field, Brandon Ayuk is commanding a 50% air yard share. That is Anything above 40 is elite. Anything above 40 is elite. The targets per route run are there. The yards per route run should correlate some with air yard share, and boom, there you go, getting close to five. He's at that average territory. Anything between four and 4.99 yards per route run, in my database, I've got that as average. Once you get that five to six, that is elite light. Anything over that is insane. That is rare stuff right there from a yards per route run perspective. He's already commanding it on his team with the full allotment of players. The yards per route run, the air yard shares there. What did Nayuk do? Right here, the yak. Not a big yak guy. This is below average at three. Debo, big time yak guy. Anything over that is uh, elite territory for Debo Samuel. So this stuff is, when, when, when you're looking at some of these things and trying to figure out and pick pockets of which you can buy and or sell. It's not, for, for me, it has nothing to do with my like of the player. It's what story can I tell myself where this player is going to produce that type of value? And if I can't sell that story, if I can't tell myself that, then, then it's time to explore a deal. I'm not telling you to get out at rock bottom prices, but damn, if I can move on and around, get a Brandon Ayuk, get a couple of other players plus some additional capital and picks, I'm doing that 1,000% of the time, and you see Brandon Ayuk, despite not being as sexy of a name as Amon Ra, he's giving you 20 fantasy points per game, opposed to Amon Ra, who's sitting at, I believe, wide receiver 10, 11, or 12 on the season, getting you about, uh, wide receiver 11, and about 17 fantasy points per game for Amon Ra St. Brown. 
He has yet to crack the top 10 in any week this season, and that may change. But this is one of those examples where Dynasty community is telling me he's Dynasty wide receiver three. The production is saying he's kind of like a back-end wide receiver one. When I see that big of a delta with a player like this that's got the name, I'm going to explore a trade for Amon Ross St. Brown. And if I can get a player like Brandon Ayuk, sign me up for that. This young man is thriving in this offense, and uh, that's with missing one game due to injury. Another player from the NFC North that I teased last night that I want to talk about as a potential buy is Green Bay Packers second-year wide receiver Romeo Dobbs. I'm all in on Romeo Dobbs, and let me tell you why. Is he going to be an elite war difference maker? Absolutely not. Let me see if that screen is still pulled up. I went off on me. I got to refresh the page. But here's where he is thriving right now. So leads the team in target share, leads the team in air yard share, leads the team in receiving market share. He is uh, second on the team in yards per route run, which two, that's that's elite light. You're getting two yards per route run. That is really good stuff right there from a yard per route run perspective. That is elite light. Average is about 1.5 to 1.99. So very good in that category, as is Jaden Reed. Yak after the catch per reception, not very good for Romeo Dobbs. The yak after catch, uh, anything below Anything below three is not very good, and you're talking about a player that is bad in my in my database. Anything below three is bad. He's at 1.85, so not his calling card to do damage after the catch. So when you're talking about the Trinity, will he fulfill that column? No. Is his cup going to overflow in the air yard share and the target share? Probably not. First read target share percentage, 28%. Very good for Romeo Dobbs. I believe Jaden Reeds will pull back as Christian Watson ramps up his activity. But I do think there's a real chance that the chemistry that he's developed with Jordan Love, this is the player that leads this team in targets. This is the player that leads this team in air yard share. This is the player that will continue to lead this team in targets per route run. And this is a player who is valued significantly lower than a player than Am like Amon Ross St. Brown that's giving you close to the same production, 15 points a game. And I get it, again, without Christian Watson. But by this theory, if he continues to lead the team in those two buckets— He's going to be a productive, impactful player for us that you might be able to get as a throw-in in a trade. So whether it's Dynasty and or Redraft, Romeo Dobbs is somebody that I definitely would be trying to target right now for fantasy football purposes. Let's move to the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, this one is going to be fun. This one is going to be fun because we have been talking about the Cardinals here on the Trinity Report for two and a half weeks now. Now, I told you all two weeks ago, go get Hollywood Brown. I know he's not scoring a ton of fantasy points, but all the peripherals are there. All of the Trinity numbers and metrics are there. And take a look at what's happening now in Arizona with this team. I know they've lost three games, but man, they're there. They have played competitive ball to be a one in three club. 26% target share for Hollywood Brown, which leads the team. Zach Ertz there at 24%. No other receiver over 15%. And to be honest with you, as much as I love Michael Wilson, I don't think he's cracking like a 20% target share guy. Target share, you want to have average, on average, at least 20 to 24.99% target share. That's about average. Anything above that, you're in elite light and elite territory. Marquise Brown, ding, 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 checks that with the target share percentage. Air yard share, right under 40%. Remember, anything over 40 is elite. So he's right there in the threshold of elite category with getting down the field. Yards per route run for Hollywood Brown, two, very good. Yards per route run, remember what that is? Anywhere from two to 2.49, that is elite light, good for Marquise Brown, good for, good for Michael Wilson as well. And then you look at the first read target percentage, 32% for him, 25% for Zach Ertz, and 15, 16% for Michael Wilson. Hollywood Brown getting you 15 fantasy points a game. Michael Wilson right around 12, big week where he had the long 70-yard touchdown pass. You look at this offense, Josh Dobbs gaining confidence, nobody else really catching the ball. I mean, it's clear and obvious. Uh, I don't even need to co Let's just look at the screen. Leader in this category, elite light, right at elite level, elite light yards per route run. Uh, you know what I mean? Average yards after the catch per reception for Hollywood Brown. This is, this is what I'm talking about right here. Actually, it's a little lower. It's below average. You got to be about three yards after the catch per reception, but... This is why a player like Hollywood, I'm not telling you to sell the farm for him because absent him getting that yak up higher, I highly doubt he's going to hit a range or a threshold where he's a true 
difference maker for you from a war perspective where he's at the top of that chart where you need to have Hollywood over everybody else. But this is a player that I know people are a little concerned of starting because of the offense, because of Josh Dobbs. Do not be concerned. He's a plug and play wide receiver, two, three with upside flex play, depending on the, the depth of your league. But this is a player that I want. I want Hollywood Brown. We've continued to talk about Hollywood Brown. I've bought him. I've tried to buy in other places. And the more talking heads that get involved with this Hollywood Brown love, the harder it is going to be able to acquire him. So hopefully you tapped into the show and bought some Hollywood Brown for the low a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> a lot of people have been asking me about the Broncos situation. Ray, talk about Jerry Judy. What are the Broncos looking like? Broncos, Broncos, Broncos. I'm telling you right now, I don't want any of them. I don't want any of them. Take a look at this because we're jamming Jerry, Judy, and company in those lineups and expecting great results. And here's what we're working with. Two players, Cortland Sutton and Jerry, Judy, the only players on the Denver team. Understand what I'm telling you. The only players on the damn roster who are getting targeted over 10% of the time. Next closest is, is Marvin Mims and his 38 routes and 11 targets get at 8.3% target share. This is abysmal. This is... This is nasty. Hopefully it changes. Hope is the greatest killer of fantasy rosters out there. So target share, uh, Cortland Sutton right at average, Jerry Judy below average. Air yard share, you look at this 30.7% for Cortland Sutton. Okay, that's average. Jerry Judy 27.4%. That is below average and approaching bad territory. Yards per route run for both of these players, Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Sub two yards per route run, which is average. That's fine. That That is okay. Yards after the catch per reception, Cortland Sutton, 2.8. Not good at all. 2.8, anything below three, bad. Jerry Judy right there at 4.6, so that's average. Cortland Sutton, bad. Jerry Judy, average. Looking at this offense, and, and because of those things, think about this. It's not me just telling you this is bad. Air yard share, not good. Yards per route run, not good. Look at the fantasy points they're getting you. Jerry Judy, you put him in your lineup every week for eight points. Corlin Sutton, you're putting him in there, you're getting your 14 points, you're walking away great. But that, that's, that is what happens when these things are not satisfied. I, that, 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 it's it. This is the trinity. It's, it's very simple to see increase in some of these categories get targeted more makes sense if you throw the damn player the ball they should score some more run down the field a little bit more jerry judy and Cortland sutton when they do throw you the ball you get more points on a 15 yard reception than you do a two yard reception and then do something after the catch Cortland sutton when you get the ball don't just fall down don't just get tackled combine just looking at those three things it's very easy very clear to see the pathways to relevancy and the pathways to uh, non-production and overhype and overvalue in name and name alone. Let's take a look at a very intriguing situation that a lot of people have been asking about, and this is Jacksonville Jaguars receiving core because everybody, hell, before we started the season, Calvin Ridley was being valued as a damn near first-round pick in underdog startup drafts. We look at what's happened since week one. All the routes, Christian Kirk leading the team in routes. Route percentage, Christian Kirk, a little bit ahead of Calvin Ridley. Targets, Christian Kirk, number one. Evan Ingram, number two. Calvin Ridley, third. Target share percentage, same order. Kirk, Ingram, Ridley. Air yard share, there you go. Calvin Ridley right there at 35% air yard share, which is elite light. Christian Kirk, not elite light. He's average. He's in the average category. Actually, he's a little below average. Need to be at 28% floor, so a little below average. So this is where Christian Kirk does not thrive down the field, and that should be correlated a little bit, air yard share, to yards per route run. But look at that. It's not. Here's a rare case where it's not. Pretty good. So he's not getting all the downfield targets, and that's referenced right here with the A dot 7.4 opposed to Calvin Ridley's 12.3. But when he is running routes, he's in a very good category. Elite light, two yards per route run, pretty solid, opposed to Calvin Ridley at 1.6, which is average. Anything below 1.5 is bad. So he's teetering on the threshold of uh, of being pretty bad in that category. And then the first three target share, where is, where is Trevor Lawrence going? Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, then Calvin Ridley. Fantasy points, 14, 12 for Evan Ingram, 12 for Calvin Ridley. So when I look at this, my analysis is this. Okay, I've got Calvin Ridley. 
the community by and large really likes Calvin Ridley. They rock with Calvin Ridley. He's dope. Blah, blah, Calvin Ridley. I'm trying to move. Can I get Christian Kirk plus? Give me Christian Kirk plus for my Calvin Ridley. You can have my Calvin Ridley. I'm going to bank on the fact that his target share percentage at 23% and Calvin Ridley sitting at 18.5, that is below average. You need to at least be at a 20% target share to hit that average threshold. Christian Kirk is teetering between average, and he's trying to work his way up to that elite light territory, but he's got to go a little bit higher. He's got to get to about 25% in order to make that come to fruition. But this is an offense where Calvin Ridley, if he's currently being valued in your leagues and prioritized higher than a Christian Kirk, can you cash out that Ridley for a Christian Kirk? Very easy, very clear to see. Give me Christian Kirk very much in on him seasonally, and I'd prefer to have him over... Uh, Calvin Ridley in Dynasty. Let's take a look at a player, Puka Nakua, who is absolutely smashing right now. Smashing for the Rams. So let's pull the Rams up and show you an example. Trinity gone right. When things are just lining up perfectly and you're like, oh yeah, this is a player that I, I need to have by any means necessary. And the interesting thing about Puka Nakua, I heard today on a podcast that uh, he's only won, when Cooper Cup in his 2021 season where he went nuclear, I think it was like 17% of his receptions came at or behind the line of scrimmage. 17%, not 17, it was 17%, something like that. Puka has got one reception at or behind the line of scrimmage this year. He's thriving short and intermediate down, short and intermediate routes. So when we're looking at Puka Nakua, 30% target share, that is elite. He's right there at elite territory. With target share, the next closest is 10, 10 percentage points down, 2 2 at well. Tyler Higby down at 15%. So elite territory for Puka Nakua. Air yard share, 33.6%. Remember, doing more damage down the field than Cooper Cup did. And I'm just taking a look at what Cup did last year in my database. Cooper Cup was air yard share is between 35 and 40%. So he had the above 30%, which is elite target share, Puka Nakua in that range. He was right around the same similar air yard share between 35 and 39%. Puka Nakua's yards per route run, 3.0. My goodness. Let's go. Let's go. Cooper Cup in that it last season for Cooper Cup, not 2021, last season, he was elite light between 2.5 and 2.99. So Puka Nakua doing a little more damage in those routes than Cooper Cup did last season. And then the yak, yards after the catch per reception, Puka Nakua, 4.5 yards after the catch per reception. And that puts him in a average territory, anywhere between 4 and 4.99. That is average. First read percentage, 37%. He's giving you about 24 fantasy points per game. This is when you've got elite in that category, damn near elite in that category, just about elite in that category. And even though the yak is average, this is how you get one of those difference makers, one of those true war difference makers like Puka Nakua. When those things line up, I don't care about anything else. He's only scored one touchdown, folks. The TDs are just bonus. That's gravy. That's icing a cherry on top of the cake. Give me the targets. Give me the valuable targets down the field and make sure you do a little something after the catch. If those three things can be accomplished Ding, 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 ring the bell. That is the trinity. That's how you get a difference maker at the wide receiver position. And just for just for fun, so we can go through it, let's take a look at Minnesota. Let's look at the Vikings so you can see it play out again. 30% target share for Justin Jefferson. We know that is elite, right there at elite territory. Anything over 30, 30, 30 plus percent, elite. Air yard share, 45%. I mean, good night. Anything above 40, elite. So elite target share, elite air yard share, yards per route run, 3.35. Oh, baby, give it to me. That ain't even elite light. That is rare. Anything above, let me just tell you right now, you get three yards per route run, folks, three yards per route run. You go back over the last 10 years, you get a receiver or two Every other year, every two years that do that, that does that. Tyreek Hill did it last year. Tyreek Hill was the only receiver that did that last year, that accomplished over three yards per route run. You do that, and maybe there was some receiver that only ran two routes and did it, but you do that, that is rarefied air right there. That was Puka over three? Uh, hell, he might be in that yak per reception. I mean, my goodness. 
5.3. We haven't even seen a receiver outside of Debo Brown, uh, De uh, Debo Samuel, that had more yak per reception that was actually sort of a meaningful guy. But 5.3, that's elite light. Anything from 5 to 5.99, that's elite light. And then you get the guy throwing in the ball 40% of the time on the first read. That's how you get 26 fantasy points per game. So just this is an example of the Trinity playing out where all three things are elite. They equal out. You get a absolute monster in Justin Jefferson. And we watch that. And I'm, you're like, Ray, we know Jefferson is good. But I'm showing you the areas and why, the how he becomes so good. So you can take this data, go to Fantasy Points Data Suite, sign up. Again, no affiliation with them. And utilize this to try to spot some pockets and areas of players that you might want to target that are a little bit under the radar. So let's do this real quick. Let's let's filter everything out. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's go target share. And I could filter all this out, but I just want to scroll down. Let's see if we can find anybody <clears throat> in that 20% range that folks aren't talking enough about. There was Nico Collins right there. Adam Thielen. We talked about Adam Thielen on the very first Trinity episode. 20% target share. So that's average. That's average target share. Air yard share, 26%. That's a little below average, right? A little below average. Yards per route run, 1.85. Yeah, you know, that's average for him. Yak, 4.5. A little bit better, right? That's average as well. Just average, 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 average. Adam Thielen giving you 17 fantasy points. Not a name that you want to invest in long-term for Dynasty, but in seasonal leagues, I continue to tell y'all. I mean, 155 routes run. I mean, hell, he's up there. That's Jamar Chase numbers right there. So if you can grab you and Adam Thielen for a third, jam him in your lineup, he's a worthy flex play wide receiver three. Seattle Seahawks are an interesting team. We'll pull them up in a second. Tyler Lockett, Evan Ingram, DJ Moore. DJ Moore target share just... You know, 20%. He's right there at average target share percentage. Air yard share, this is elite, over 40%. Really good. Yards per route run, 2.7. This is elite light. First read target percentage, 33%. He's giving you 15 points a game. This would be much higher. The 15.3 points per game would be much higher if DJ Moore were commanding a little more targets. We need more targets. Air yard share, beautiful. Uh, team market share, good. Yards per route run, good. Yak at five. I mean, this, I mean, hell, you talk about if you've got conviction on the Bears, throwing the ball a little bit more, go get DJ Moore. If you've got conviction that they're going to pass the ball some more, go get DJ Moore. This is, these are the things that I'm looking for. Like, I like what I'm seeing out of DJ Moore. Let's scroll down a little bit. Drake London. I'm not liking it. I don't like this. And we'll pull up Drake London in a minute, but I do not like what I'm seeing out of Drake London. There's Jerry Judy down there. Just looking at targets, not good for Jerry Judy. Jahan Dotson, not good. We're going to pull up the football team, the Commanders. We're going to pull up the Seahawks. We're going to pull up the Texans. We're going to pull up the Titans, and that's how we're going to close this thing out. So let's go Commanders. Let's go Commanders. Here's why I'm selling Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, you can go. I think you guys are talented players, but I'm trying to score fantasy points. And the way Sam Hall is distributing the ball right now, when you got five, four players Right at anywhere between 11 and 18% target share. This is probably going to just be so spread out that it just nukes a little bit of everybody. You got a tight end and three receivers all above 12% target share. And then your three starting receivers are within five percentage points of each other in target share. This is not good. 20 targets for Samuel, 24 for Dotson, 26 for McLaurin. Even though he leads the team in target share, there is no alpha. He's spreading the ball around to a little bit of everybody. Yes, he's leading the team in air yard share. But, 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 yards per route run for all of them. Look at Terry McLaurin, 1.5 yards per route run. And well, this is average. It's right at the threshold of average. 1.5 is like average. Anything below 1.5 is bad. So average, average, average for Cole Turner, average for Deami Brown. Yak after the catch per reception. Look at Terry McLaurin amongst his own team. Curtis Samuel, 4.7. This is very good. He's getting close to that elite light territory. Terry McLaurin, 2.57 yards after the catch per reception. That is below average. You need to be at a threshold of three there. Jahan Dotson, even worse than below average. I mean, this is just putrid right here. This is not good. And it's not an indictment on Dotson. It's how they're using him in this offense. And because of that, because of this this very equalized distribution of targets and 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 really targets. That's really what it is. It's too close. 12 fantasy points for McLaurin, 10 for Curtis Samuel, 8 for Logan Thomas, and 8 for Jahan Dotson. And I know it seems like ancillary, but then throw Dayami Brown's 
you know, his seven targets that don't go to one of those guys. And he's like, you get, this is, this is a sell. If people like Terry McLaurin in your league, go. It's 28 year old receiver that is not commanding the targets on his own, on his own offense. And whether it's him, the enemy, Sam Howard, the scheme, the facts and the data are the facts and the data. 12 fantasy points per game. First read target share percentage. Look at this. 26% for him, but 20% for Dotson. 17% for Cur Curtis Samuel. I just, I don't want to see this. And if people are valuing McLaurin higher than I value his production, those are the type of players I have no problem trading away. And let me show you another one where, again, I don't really want any part of this offense. You look at Tennessee. DeAndre Hopkins. This is when you're commanding it, right? Over 12 percentage points higher than the next closest guy earning targets in Traylon Burks, sub 20%. We know 20% is the floor. That's below average. DeAndre Hopkins getting you elite light target share percentage. Air yard share, elite light at 37%. Traylon Burks right at 30, which is not bad. Yards per route run. Look at this. Traylon Burks, 1.3. Bad. Needs you at a floor of 1.5. He's in bad territory. DeAndre Hopkins in pretty good territory. Over, uh, you know, you, you you want this about two and a half to about three. That's that's elite light territory, but he's average. Yak, Hopkins, not doing anything after the catch. I mean, this is not good. Bad. Average, average Yak is four yards. He's at damn, he's not even at two for DeAndre Hopkins. And for all his work, for all the trouble, even though Traylon Burks is at five, which is elite light territory. So one of the three Trinity buckets is fulfilled. He's elite light here and yak after the catch per reception, bad in target share, bad in yards per route run, okay in air yard share, fantasy points per game, Traylon Burks getting you five points. Why? If you got him in Dynasty, trade him. Go buy him back later. Nothing is changing with Ryan Tannehill in this offense. It's not an indictment on Traylon Burks. I think if they actually threw him the ball, maybe try throwing him a little bit more than um, Nick Westbrook Akine or, or giving Chris Moore 7% of the target. Why don't you give Traylon Burke some opportunity? But you know what, folks? Until that happens, this is a player you cannot start. You can't start him. Do not play him in seasonal leagues. And if you can move off of him in Dynasty, I would be doing that 100% of the time. We talked about the Seattle Seahawks. Love this show. Love doing this and looking through stuff. So let's take a look at the Seahawks. If I can spell Seahawks right. A lot of chatter on this one. And as you really look at the numbers, very close. Just look at the raw targets. 26 for Lockett, 23 for Metcalf, 20 for JSN. Route participation, lower than everybody else by a significant amount. But that should mean his targets for per route run should be relatively high. You filter that out, boom, he's tied for the first on the in the team on, on targets per route run had a DK Metcalf at 0.22. There's the problem with, with JSN. Target share, sure. That's a problem right there. 15%, 17%, 20%. It's gross. That 20% for Lockett's getting you 11.7 points. DK Metcalf, you're getting 14 points. Scored a touchdown, but getting 14 points out of there. This is the problem with JSN. Look at this. Look at his A dot. His average depth of target, 2.8. But watch this. Yards per route run, you know the, the, the floor, the floor for this, right? You're talking about yards per route run. Where do you want average? Average, one and a half to about 1.99. JSN, 0. 0.70. The, this is Tyler Lockett, bad, 1.32. You need to at least be average in this, which average for yards per route run is 1.5. Just a floor of 1.5, one and a half yards per route run. JSN, bad. Lockett, bad. DK Metcalf, 2.37, pretty damn good. Getting close to that, to that elite territory for DK Metcalf. But because of this distribution, because the target share percentages are so close, I don't even care. I don't even have to get this. Is this is irrelevant? The air yard share doesn't even matter. Look at JSN, 6.2, putrid, putrid, and it correlates with the yards per route run. The yak after the catch per reception, sure, he's in elite, elite category. I mean, hell, he's. He's getting close to he's getting close to to elite right there. He's an elite light, but he's getting close to elite yak per reception. But hell, he ain't he ain't getting much, right? First read target share percentage. You take a look at that. Metcalf 30, 23. Tyler Lockett damn near 23. And JSN right at 18. Look at the fantasy point. This is just, it's a situation that I don't know if it's the offense. I don't know if they're running the ball more. I don't know if it's a Geno Smith problem. But I kind of just <sighs> 
What do you do? You're, people are asking me, Ray, would you rather G, uh, get Puka Nakua or, or JSN? How can you look at the data and say, I would rather have JSN? Give me Puka Nakua. Give me Puka Nakua. If we had to redo the draft, and some people may be like, oh, it's short-sighted. It'll change next year. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, even with Tyler Lockett's not doing anything. Jason's not a downfield guy. This is just what, this is his role. He didn't do it in college, and I highly doubt it's going to happen in the NFL. And the data is telling us it's not happening in the NFL. Therefore, I am just a um, little skeptical and hesitant on that situation redraft, I, I'm de absent an injury or two, very much not in on that situation. And Dynasty long term still like the player, but let me tell you what happens when you like a player, but the data just doesn't align. What do you do with the Atlanta Falcons? Drake London leading his team in target share. All oh, great, awesome, eighteen percent, no bad. That's below average of twenty percent. Air yard share, man, he ain't even leading his team in that. Twenty eight percent air yard share, barely at the threshold at average, barely there. Yards per route run, y'all know what the floor is, 1.5, 1.05, woof, 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 not good for Drake London, and I don't even need to go to the yak because he wasn't a big yak guy in college, but the average floor for that, you need to be at about three, and Drake London is sitting at 2.36, fantasy points per game, he's giving you 8.9, and that's just because he's scoring some touchdowns, first read target share, you look at the other ancillary metrics, 23%, but Pitts is at 21%, Jonu Smith is at 20%, and Matt Collins is at 16%. Folks, pray all you want, but until there's a quarterback upgrade, this situation is bad. Bad target share, bad yards per route run, average to below, bad yard, yak after the catch per reception. This is not good. Trust the data, follow the volume, the utilization, and how these players are being deployed. Last player I want to talk about, from the Jets. I think I said like five teams. I'm going through whatever. Garrett Wilson. I was a little concerned. Very concerned with uh, the downgrade of quarterback. Comma, however, this is a great example of certain elements of the Trinity not being fulfilled. But 2015 DeAndre Hopkins gets activated. And we might be approaching that right now with Garrett Wilson, who is dominating his team in target share. Even though it's only 27% which is technically below average, he's getting it all on his team. Whatever Zach Wilson throws, it's going there. dot, not very high, yet the air yard share right at elite territory at 40%. Look at the yards per route run. Look at the yards per route run at 1.7. My bad, Siri, we ain't talking to you. 1.7, so that's above the bad threshold, but it ain't very good, right? 1.5, that's average. That's average yards per route run. Yak after the catch per reception would really like to see that at five, but he's chilling right there in an average territory. But, 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 he's getting you 14 fantasy points per game, which is damn near the same amount as DK Metcalf, a little bit lower than Romeo Dobbs. We talked about some other players who are averaging 15 fantasy points. If he's going to go full DeAndre Hopkins and get 14, 15 targets a game, that will buoy up and balloon up the other buckets and categories which are lacking. That volume, just from a target perspective, should keep his fantasy points afloat, if not increase. And this is how I use this data to identify some buys, some sells, some players I want to take some calculated risks and bets on. So the Texans. I think the Texans was one more I want to pull up. Let's pull up Houston real quick before we get out of here. Let's pull up the Texans. Take a look at this. Here we go. Very, very uh, a very similar. Very similar type situation where you got a lot of players kind of lumped in there. You got 16% target share for Tank Dell, 20% for Woods, and 21% target share for Nico Collins. Nico Collins leading the team in air yard share by a significant margin, almost 10 percentage points ahead of Robert Woods and 10 percentage points ahead of Nathaniel Dell. His yards per route run, let's go, let's go. Anything over what is very good. Anything over three is elite, is rare, rare, rare. I don't want to count John Mechie because he's only run 17 rounds. But once I take the filter off of this thing and we take a look, I guarantee you anybody over three, they're probably pretty damn good. This is rare to see three for a whole season, right? This is, this is awesome. Then you take a look at the yak for Nico at nine again. Elite to rare, rare, anything over six is elite. It's just elite. 
and then he's being targeted 27% of the time. So again, even though the target distribution is close to the same as a Robert Woods and Tank Dell not too far behind, because he's doing so much more down the field, air yards, yards per route run, and he's doing so much more with the ball in his hands after he catches it, this is why Nico Collins has 20.7 fantasy points per game. Oh, yeah, Ray, but the touchdowns, he's getting them because he's running the valuable yards. He's he's breaking tackles after the catch. Now, we can filter out by blown coverages and other things, but just looking at that, this is why Nico Collins is thriving, and I do continue believe that this will continue to, to happen throughout the season with C.J. Stroud throwing the ball as much as he is. And look at Nico. When you're just talking about route percentages, hell, he's right there with, with Tank Dell at 112 routes. So let's take this off. And just take a look one more time at the yards per route run leaders. Let's take a look at that. Yards per route run. We're not looking at no Will Mallory. So let's fil filter this out. And let's go uh, minimum routes. We've got to go at least at least 75 routes. Like, come on, man. Minimum targets. We'll leave that at uh, custom. We'll go 20 targets. Let's just filter this out really quickly so we can just take a look at where these uh, yards per route run leaders are. And maybe Yak. We'll take a look at those two. And then we'll go ahead and wrap this up. I don't know how long I've been talking for. I just love looking at this type of data. Here we go. I told you that anybody over three yards per route run is rare, and they're probably all very good. And I haven't even looked at this, but let's take a look. Number one, Tyreek Hill, 4.20. <sighs> Y'all, ridiculous. If Ty is fast and as good as Tyreek Hill is, you would think he'd be a yak monster, but he's really not. He's been kind of average in that department, but the yards per route run at four. Unreal. Nico Collins, second. Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, Keenan Allen, and Devontae Adams at 2-9. Let's put Steph on. There goes, there goes your leaders. There goes everybody over three. Allen, Nakua, A.J. Brown, Mike Evans, Justin Jefferson, Nico Collins, Tyreek Hill. Let's take a look at the yak after the catch per reception. Nico Collins, number one in the league. Number one in the league. And... I'm going to just leave it at that. I think we've done enough diving through the Fantasy Points data suite. I'm excited. I'm excited for some of these players. 47 minutes. Good Lord. I did not realize we were on this long, but I'm going to wrap it up here. So I appreciate you tapping in. If you stuck around until the end of the video, you found it actionable and or entertaining, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, like the content, comment below. Let me know what you thought about this show, these players. Are you going to go buy you some Romeo Dobbs? Are you going to sell you some Amon Ross St. Brown? Let me know below. Be back next week with more Trinity Talk. I'm out. Peace.